Hello, today we will talk about adding another element, another panel, which will let us to change the color of our cabinet. And it will be placed on the bottom. Alright, let's start. First, let's create a new tab, and we will call it color, as we will be changing the colors here. Now let's add a new element. We will call it bottom panel. It will group all the buttons elements, which will be used to change the color. Next, just like in previous tutorial, let's set up its style. We will do it right inside that element. Let's leave the color as is, and as of the width, we will leave it at 245 pixels. It will be pretty wide. Let's set the name and play. And here we have the panel, but I want it to be on the bottom. For that, let's add another parameter, which we will call bottom. Actually, we have four of such parameters, bottom, top, left and right. We already have used some of them while creating the left panel. And here actually is a little rule. The alignment of the elements will correspond to the first parameter from this list. So, for example, if I set here 0 pixels, the panel will jump to the bottom. But if I also place here tab parameter first and also set it to 0 pixels, the panel will jump to the top. And left and right work just the same. Let's again set the panel to be on the bottom. And as for left and right location, I will use the same method that we have used in previous tutorial, where we have set the vertical alignment to be on the center. Now we need to do the same, but with horizontal alignment. So let's set left. And select margin left. Then I will set left to 50%, so it will be in the center, and then I will shift the panel to minus 127.5 pixels. Here we go, and now the panel is right in the center, no matter how much I change the proportions of the window. Next, let's add the buttons on our panel. The first button will be called green, and it will be set in the color to, well, green. We will add text puzzle here and copy the name of the panel. And with the same logic in mind, I will also add four more buttons. Of course, I will need to change their names. To blue, pink, and wood. Now all we need is to set the button style. I will use the style that we have already created. Here it is. It will be convenient to do it this way. I will select Sets Property Puzzle. Here I will set class name. And our button class is called Button. And here I will place the list, consisting of four elements. And the text puzzle. And I will copy all the names of the new buttons right here. This way I will set the style for all four buttons. Let's press play and here they are. But for some reason we have only one button. It is like this because all the buttons are aligned vertically and we can't see them. For example, if I shift the whole panel up by 50 pixels, here we can spot the hidden buttons. Ok, let's shift it back to normal. To fix this, we need to change how our buttons 
are being grouped together. For that, let's go to CSS rule for all buttons. And here, let's add another parameter, which will be called float. And here, let's set it to left, so it will be aligned towards the left side. And here we go, the buttons are aligned horizontally. These buttons here are actually also trying to be aligned horizontally. But the panel that contains them isn't wide enough, so they jump to the bottom. Thus, in a vertical panel, the buttons are aligned from top to bottom. While in horizontal panel, they are aligned left to right. Alright, now let's set the color for the panel to be transparent. And that concludes the alignment of our bottom panel buttons. Now we need to set for each of them their individual colors. So it will be understandable right away which color we will be changing to. So to do that I will also use the puzzle set style for element. Let's drag it here. And I will be changing the background's color parameter for our elements. First, for the green, I will use hexagonal system to set the color. I have already prepared the colors. Now all we need to do is to set the material for this button. And this button will switch the material of the cabinet back to wooden panel. For that I will also use the set style puzzle, type in the button's ID, but here I will be changing background image, not background's color. Because now we don't just have the color, we have the texture. And here I will type in the name of the image, Walnut Base Color. JPEG. Alright, it works, but it looks stretched. So, we will need to redact another parameter, which is called background size. It is set to auto by default and we will set it to 200%. Now the texture scaled down a little bit and is looking much better. Alright, we are finished setting up the interface. Now let's edit a material, so we will be able to switch between different colors and switch to the texture. For that I will add an RGB node here. We can plug it into the base color and now we will be able to change the color to what we want. For now I will set something natural, something close to the wood color. Next, we need to add the color mix node. This node will be the switch between the color and the wooden texture. Also, to make it all work, we will need another node, a value node, which will be plugged in as a factor. Alright, let's call it switcher. And that's all the changes to the material so far. Let's set it to 1, so we will always have the wood by default. Now let's export it to Verge3D. Alright, let's reload the puzzles. So we will have all the changes that we just made to the material available. And let's add the puzzle on event of click. Or when we press the button. Let's start with green button. Here we will need to change the color of the material by pressing this button. So let's go to the materials puzzles and grab the puzzle set color. Let's choose the material. It is called table mat and the RGB node that we just added. 
Now we need to type in the green color parameters. Red will be to 0 0.285, green will be set to 1, and blue to 0 0.5. Alright, let's press play and try how it works. And nothing happens. That is because we also need to change the node's value, which serves as a switch between the color and the texture. For that we will need puzzle set value. Also let's select the same material and set switcher to zero. Let's press play again and now try the green button and here we go, the color has changed. Now let's make the color change a bit smoother because right now it changes instantly. For that we will need a special node from the animation puzzles which is called animate param. Let's add it here. This puzzle animates the set digit from the point set here to the point set here in certain amount of time. It can also work with three digits at once if we set it to vector. So we can plug our numbers here and we will have animation of all three digits at once. To make this work, first we need to take the active color setup from the material. For that we will need the puzzle Get Color. Let's select RGB from the table mat material and RGB node. Now let's place it into input from. Let's change to vertical view. And here we need to set the color that we will be changing to. For that let's use the vector or three digits at once, which will be RGB values. Let's place it here and set the numbers for RGB color that we need. So let's copy them from here. Vector by itself is X, Y and Z coordinates, but also it will work perfectly as RGB channels for color. Now all we need to do is to place our set color RGB here and instead of these numbers we will be using the puzzle updated value. This puzzle transfers the animation from here to here directly. So the animation will be sent to wherever we plug it, from one state to another. And as we have three parameters changing at once, we will also need another puzzle. Get Vector Let's select Vector X and it will be our red channel. Let's also set it vertically. The next channel, green, will be set as Y vector. And vector Z for blue channel. Also, we will need to do the same with value parameter. But it will be easier because we only have one number changing. Let's place this puzzle here, the set value here, updated value goes here, and just like before, we will get the active state of the value parameter from the material. And we will be animating it to the new state. Let's set it to zero. And all of that will be animating during the 0.5 seconds. So both here and here we will set 0.5. Let's save and reload the page. Alright, let's try it and press the green button. And here we have the smooth changing of the color. Alright, now we need to repeat the same for other buttons, for other colors. But if we just copy everything, it will be a lot of puzzles. So let's automate it. We will create a procedure. We need to place all this setup into the procedure. 
and for each button we will be using the same procedure with some changed parameters. Let's call it Animate Material and here we need to add three variables. Let's call the first new R or new red, new G, new green channel, and new B. Also, we will need new value. Now we need to place these variables into vector parameters. New B goes to blue channel. New R goes to red channel. And new G will go here. So we will be using the variables instead of set numbers. And new value will go here. Now here we need to place our freshly created procedure. And all we need to do is just to set the same numbers again. Let's grab the number puzzle and place it here. Now let's set the numbers that we need again. So red to 0 0.285, 1, 0 0.5, and value needs to be set to 0. Alright, let's save and reload. Ok, pressing the green button and everything works the same. But now it is very easy to set the same for other buttons. We just need to copy the procedure and type in the numbers of RGB color. So, for the blue button, the numbers will be 0 0.24, 0 0.58, 1 and 0. Let's save and do the same for all other buttons. Now here let's set it to 1 and let's save and check how it works in the main application. Let's try pressing buttons and everything works with very smooth animation. Alright, that's all, thank you, see you in the next tutorial.